Now, there's certainly no shortage of amazing weaponry to be found in video games, but is that much of a surprise given how much damn fun you can have with a bloody good video game weapon? No. Well, getting into a game world and receiving an incredible tool for dishing out the damage is a feeling like any other. As such, developers are always scrambling to make their arsenal in their games as good as possible. Doing so can help those items reach the upper echelon of gaming and become something more than just the sum of their parts, they can become something truly iconic. But sometimes, the origin stories behind these weapons, well, they're a little strange, and that's what we're here to talk about today. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 weird origins behind iconic video game weapons. Number 10. Gordon Freeman's Crowbar – Half-Life Now, it's hard to picture the legendary Gordon Freeman without Freeman. <laughs> Gordon Freeman without his trusty crate-smashing crowbar. That said, why did the devs decide to give their protagonist such a plain and simple melee weapon? Well, Gabe Newell opened up about that very choice during an hour-long documentary exploring the first game's development, documented here, which you can see here on PC Gamer, and you know what, it is quite something. According to Newell, one of the earliest priorities during Half-Life's production was ensuring that the environments reacted to your choices. In essence, he felt that many game walls didn't respond to players' actions, claiming that if he attacks a wall and if it leaves no mark, well, it feels like the wall is ignoring me. With that in mind, the devs introduced walls that showed damage when struck. Then they spent a lot of time running around like idiots smacking the wall. In Newell's own words, when you're going around whacking a wall, a crowbar is a kind of obvious thing to whack a wall with. And that is where the soon-to-be-beloved crowbar made its debut. Number 9. The Blue Shell Mario Kart Ah, the blue shell. All oh, that could also be read as, ah, oh, the blue shell. For decades now, this monstrosity has caused pain, anger, devastation, and the demise of many friendships. This spiky devil, when fired, will find the person riding in first no matter what and end their dreams of dominating the race with ease. But did you know that the devs actually forged it out of necessity? Well, Mario Kart's creator Hideki Kono discussed this in an interview with Kotaku. He claimed that the spiny shell, more commonly known as the blue shell, existed to make up for the Nintendo 64's processing limitations. He claimed that despite wanting a game where everyone was in it until the end, processing problems occurred that did didn't allow us to do that. By the midpoint of the race, Kono claimed that there was natural separation and that all attempts to push them back together with the N64, having eight races on the screen at all time, didn't work that well. With that in mind, they designed the blue shell to level the playing field, allowing everyone to stand a chance of keeping close to each other and avoid straining the console. Number 8. The Grafted Blade Greatsword Elden Ring If you're the type of Elden Ring player who likes to grab the biggest weapon possible and bonk enemies with it until they beg for mercy, then chances are that you've come across the Grafted Blade Greatsword. This enormous sword, like the dastardly Godric, grafts multiple blades onto itself to add as much damage and destruction as possible. It's a fantastic way to deal death and scales great with strength, naturally, but fans of the ever-popular Game of Thrones franchise will actually look at this and say, well, this looks slightly familiar, right? With George R. R. Martin being a lore consultant on Elden Ring, it was a given that you'd see some Song of Ice and Fire style easter eggs in this title. And the origins of this sword stem from that entirely, as it's designed to look like the coveted prize of the series, the Iron Throne. The idea of condensing the iconic royal seat down into a single blade is gnarly as hell and makes for a great weapon that you can get your hands on pretty early. Number 7. The Shovel Blade – Shovel Knight the evolution of Shovel Knight and his trusty shovel blade is an excellent example of how creativity can often come from unexpected places. In this case, that unexpected place was a humorous observation that snowballed into the creation of one of gaming's most iconic indie mascots. In an interview with Nintendo, Sean Velasco, the founder of Shovel Knight development studio Yacht Club Games, discussed the origin of the shovel attack. He claimed that it originated from the dev's desire to focus on one main attack, with the down thrust from Zelda 2 being a major influence. This motion of bouncing down led to digging into blocks. This further led to digging them out from the side and flipping over enemies with an attack. From there, the devs realized that they'd all but created a weapon akin to a shovel and thus, in Velasco's own words, they decided, okay, it'll be a shovel guy. So the lesson learned here is to always play around because you might just make the next big thing. Number 6. Keyblades – Kingdom Hearts 
Now, chainsaws make pretty good weapons. Just look at the likes of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Chainsaw Man, or Lollipop Chainsaw. Still, they don't mix well with kid-friendly video game franchises owing to their pretty violent nature. That's what makes it so bizarre that the beloved Keyblades from Kingdom Hearts actually began life as chainsaws. Yes, really. In an interview with 1UP documented here on IGN, Kingdom Hearts director and creator Tetsuyo Nomura discussed the early concept for the game's weapons. The first weapon I showed Disney was a chainsaw, he said adding that all Disney executives got a scrunched-up look on their faces and sat there in dead silence. Needless to say, he soon abandoned the idea and looked to make another unconventional weapon that was far less frightening to the bigwigs. That's where the soon-iconic Keyblade design came from. Just imagine how bizarre it would have been to see Mickey Mouse fighting with a chainsaw. Although, now that you say that, it actually does sound pretty bloody metal. Number 5. Almost Everything Worms If you want to find a game full of the goofiest weapons you've ever seen, then boy howdy, you better make like an early bird and get those worms. This franchise is so chock-a-block with ludicrous weaponry that it could take up multiple places on this list. But instead, let's enjoy a little compilation of some of the funniest. Firstly, the dreaded concrete donkey is inspired by a real statue. This giant stone donkey lived in the garden of series creator Andy Davidson's childhood home. He even believed that it had a living donkey within the concrete. The poor thing. The next is the MB Bomb, named after Team 17's studio director Martin Brown, otherwise known as Spadge. The bomb itself is said to be a physical representation of the man, acting as an in-joke for the devs. Lastly, there's also Mike's Carpet Bomb, a powerful weapon seemingly named after Mike's Carpets, a popular Yorkshire-based carpet store chain. Those are just a few examples of how the bonkers world of worms created some of the most iconic weaponry in video games. Needless to say, Team 17 do not take themselves too seriously. Number 4. The Buster Sword – Final Fantasy VII now, If you like anime or Japanese video games, you've definitely come across the image of somebody holding a sword that's about 10 times too big for them. Perhaps one of the most iconic of these overcompensators is Cloud from Final Fantasy VII, whose Buster Sword is so massive and over the top it looks like it would bust your bones if he ever tried to lift the bloody thing. But funnily enough, Cloud's big old sword draws inspiration from a wholly unexpected place, that being the no-holds-barred 18-plus manga series Berserk. This series, written by the late great Kentaro Mura, is a bloody, disturbing, and often unbearable story. While it's a horrid struggle to get through at times, it's also an incredible and influential piece of media that has inspired all sorts of games, from Monster Hunter to the whole Soulsborne genre. The protagonist of this series is a man called Gertz, who holds the Dragon Slayer sword. Described as a large hunk of iron, this blade is colossal and inspired plenty of future media weaponry, including the Buster Sword. Number 3. The Dual Pistols – The Tomb Raider Series It's no secret that the beloved Lara Croft is heavily inspired by cinema, one of the most obvious influences being the globe-trotting archaeologist Indiana Jones. However, if you think her cinematic counterparts end there, well, you're raiding the wrong tomb. One of Miss Croft's signature weapons, the Dual Pistols, have major Hong Kong action movie inspiration backing them up. Toby Gard, the creator of Lara Croft, revealed in Retro Gamer issue number 163 that he claimed the double pistols came from his love of the John Woo classic Hard Boiled. He said, I'd seen Hard Boiled and I wanted to get that in, adding, I wanted to have that kind of dual pistol insanity going on with leaping and shooting and stuff. The bombastic movie features a shootout scene that arguably popularized the jumping through the air with two guns action trope, so the next time you shoot your way through a classic Tomb Raider title, fire one off for old John Woo. Number 2. The BFG 9000 Doom. It's safe to say that playing with wicked toys when you're a kid can definitely lead to some major creative inspirations when you grow up, as toys often act as a child's first eye into using their imagination. It's also safe to say that the legendary BFG 9000 from Doom took that lesson at little to heart. Because that's right, this massive destroyer of demons is in fact based on a toy. The Big F Gun is arguably Doom's most iconic dealer of death and destruction, but its design came from a much simpler and less deadly place, that being a Toys R Us blaster called The Machine, made by Fuyoko. When taking this toy gun and holding another one up next to it, you can see that the BFG 9000 is designed after it, with each detail matching it perfectly. The devs used this goofy sci-fi toy as the basis for the BFG, splicing two of them together to capture the high-tech look of this massive handheld cannon. And number 1. Scorpion's Kunai Rope Dart – The Mortal Kombat Series 
Now, any gamer worth their salt knows what these words mean. Get over here! Mortal Kombat Scorpion is gonna drag you towards him with his iconic rope dart. It's a weapon as synonymous with the series as fatalities and media controversy. However, it might surprise you to learn that the entire thing was made up on the fly. To celebrate 30 years of MK, co-creator Ed Boon took to X to share some behind-the-scenes factoids. One fascinating revelation was the unexpected origin behind this weapon, with real video footage of its creation. The video shows Boone and John Tobias leading a motion capture session to make Scorpion's moveset. Boone claims that he had an idea for a cool-ass move where the character throws something. From there, the idea evolved into one of MK's most defining attacks. Honestly, it's quite incredible to watch gaming history unfolding in this video. In gaming, most things are premeditated, with art, design, coding, player functionality and more in mind, but this iconic weapon was created without any of that, just some cameras, willing participants and impulsive creativity. Awesome. And those are 10 weird origins behind iconic video game weapons. I hope that you enjoyed that and let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on AX and Instagram where it's at RetroJ, but the O is A0. Big love to you all and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.